Hi there, and welcome again in our training program, the Basel II training program. We are still discussing the operational risk, and today we are going to speak about the standardized approach. Let's briefly explain what is a standardized approach. The standardized approach is another method for calculating the operational risk capital charge. While this approach also relies on a fixed factor as a percentage of gross income, it allows bank to use up to eight such factor called beta, depending upon their business line. The standardized approach is more risk sensitive than the previous approach that we discussed which was basic indicator approach. Internationally active bank may use this approach as an interim measure in moving toward the advanced measurement approach. The standardized approach identifies two main components to be used in calculating the operational risk capital charge. One, gross income of eight business lines. And two, beta, a fixed percentage of a gross income of each business line which set by Basel Committee. Below are the formula for calculating the operational risk capital charge under the standardized approach. My friend, I know that the formula looks a little bit scary, but believe me, we will explain it later on and you will find it so simple and so easy to be applied. Eight business lines are recommended for use by Basel Committee in calculating the operational risk charge under the standardized approach. These business lines are Corporate Finance, Trading and Sales, Retail Banking, Commercial Banking, Payment and Settlement, Agency Services, Asset Management, Retail Broker. Under the standardized approach, the gross income is calculated for each of the eight business lines. It serves as a proxy for the likely scale of exposure of that business line of the bank to operational risk. And now let's talk about beta. Beta serves as a proxy for the industry-wide relationship between the operational risk loss experience and the level of operational risks, risk exposure as reflected in the gross income for a business line. And now let's see the beta for each business line which been set by the Basel Committee. Corporate Finance, 18%. Trading and Sales, 18%. Retail Banking, 12%. Commercial Banking, 15%. Payment and Settlement, 18%. Agency Services, 15%. Asset Management, 12%. Retail Brokerage, 12%. Calculating the Operational Risk Capital Charge under the Standardized Approach. Here we have five steps to be followed in order to calculate the capital charge. Step number one. Calculate the capital charge for each business line using its gross income and applicable beta factor in year one. Remember, if the gross income from a business line is negative, the capital charge for that business line in year one will be negative. Step number two. Sum the eight capital charges of business lines for year one. Remember, in a year, negative capital charge in some business lines may offset positive capital charge for other business lines without any limit. In step number three and number four, we will do the same what we did in step number one and number two for the second year and for the third year. Step number five. Calculate the three-year average of the aggregated capital charges. Remember, where the aggregate capital charge across all business line in a given year is negative, then the input to the numerator for that year will be zero. 
The denominator will remain a 3, representing the 3 year, including in your calculation. My dear, let's now apply these 5 steps into reality and put them in a real life example to see how exactly these steps are going to work. Okay, now let's together see how the standardized approach work and how we can use the five steps that have been explained earlier. First, let's look at the business line. We have eight business lines. Let's start with the first one, corporate finance. What we want here is to find out the capital requirement for each year. So we will start with year one. To find the capital requirement, we are going to multiply the beta for corporate finance, which is 18%, by the gross income for year one, which is 250, and the answer is 45. And we are going to do the same for year two. We are going to multiply the beta for corporate finance, which is 18%, with the gross income for year two, which is 300, and the answer is 54. And we are going to do the same for year three. We are going to multiply the beta for corporate finance by the gross income for year three, which is 200, and the answer is 36. My dear, I'm sure that the mechanism is clear for you. So please, do the same what we did for the second business line and for the third until you complete the, the eighth business line. Next, we are going to add the eighth business line together for each year separately. And as you can see here, for year one, the aggregate capital requirement is 272.25. And for year 2 is 180.9. And for year 3 is 113.55. And in this example, the 3 year are having positive gross income. So the 3 figures going to be used in the numerator. And then we are going to divide the total of these 3 year by a 3, which represents the 3 year in order to get the average aggregate capital requirement, which is in this example, 189. And now let's see a different example, where we have negative gross income, and let's see what is going to be the treatment. In this example, we are going to see what will happen if we end up with a negative gross income for a specific year after adding the 8th business line. So we are not going to do the same what we did in the previous example because I believe that it was clear and you understand it clearly. So what we are focusing here, if you can look at the last line which showing the aggregate capital requirement. You will notice that the aggregate capital requirement for year 2 is 0. This is because if you add the 8 business line for year 2, you will end up with a negative value. And as we explained earlier, that whenever we end up with a negative aggregate capital charge for a given year, we will exclude that negative figure from the numerator for that year and will put a zero instead of it. Unlike the basic indicator approach and the standardized approach, the denominator will remain a three, representing the three years included in the calculation. And now we are going to add year one, which is 272.25, plus year 2 which is 0 plus year 3 which is 113.25 then we will divide the total by 3 in order to get the aggregate capital requirement which is in this example 129 
My dear, as I always believe that learning can always be fun. So try to have fun while you are learning.